to the east of the Garden of Eden. God placed a regiment of cherubim, the army of God armed with formidable and uncontrollable power, depicted with flaming and flashing swords. In Genesis 1.26, to whom did God speak? Does the Father speak to his word? And is spirit within one essence, or within the divine counsel? The Lord God is not alone in heaven, around him. There are numerous angels. God often first declares the decisions. He will implement before the assembly of angels. This assembly is referred to as the council of the Lord. This activity is also known in theological terms as the divine council. For who hath stood in the council of the Lord, Sard, Adonai, and hath perceived and heard his word, who hath marked his word, and heard it, Jeremiah 23, 18. The throne of God is surrounded by the hosts of heaven. God is in the presence of the divine council. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. 1 Kings 20 to 19. God himself has a name, the Lord of hosts, Yohavet Savot. The term Sevo is derived from the root Saba or Tsava, meaning army or hosts. The expression Yohava read Adonai. Savot is used nearly 300 times in the Old Testament, especially in Isaiah, Jeremiah, Zechariah, and Malachi. It serves as a title of power and strength, often employed in military or apocalyptic contexts. The Lord God is not alone in heaven, around him. There are many angels. This parallels the idea that when the Lord Jesus Christ returns to the world, he does not come alone but with his angels. In Genesis chapters 1 to 11, there are three instances in the book of Genesis where God speaks in the plural form, addressing the first person plural. Genesis 1:26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. To whom did God speak? Does the Father speak to his word? And his spirit within one essence, or within the divine counsel? Some Christian commentary books state that the word us represents God addressing the heavenly host. For example, in the Wycliffe Bible Commentary, Volume 1, page 29, it similarly writes, quoting in part, Let us make man is a narrative that depicts God as inviting the heavenly council to focus their attention on a plan for creating man, and it asks them to pay attention to this event. The names of the participants in the divine council are titles held by the servants of Jehovah, each having several descriptive titles. The variety of this terminology indicates the significant interest that the Israelites had in the council's constituents. The reality of this divine council is widely held. In ancient biblical Israel, many names appear in the Psalms, a collection reflecting popular theological perceptions. Some names also appear in Job, a book teaching the wisdom education philosophy. There, these names are primarily associated with the function of a council, assembly. A major focus in these books Overall, the numerous variations of terms for the divine council suggest their diverse titles. For example, in Joshua 5, 13 to 15, there is the expression, Shart Seva Adonai, the commander of the army of the Lord. Generally, the Bible does not detail the hierarchical ranks of the council members, and it doesn't systematize their ranks. However, there are groups of angels that hold positions such as chief angels, for example, Michael. Here are five examples of names of participants in the Divine Assembly. 1. Mighty Ones, Abiram. 2. Warriors, Agibarim. 3. Cherubim, meaning those near, angels near, Cherubim. 
Four, Umpire, Arbiter, Machiac. Five, Ravager, Destructor, Administering Punishment. Nashkit. There is a divine council in the fall of man. God takes notice of his creation, and when Adam falls into sin, this crucial event is undoubtedly discussed in the divine council. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil, and now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Genesis 3.22 To the east of the Garden of Eden, God placed a regiment of cherubim, the army of God armed with formidable and uncontrollable power, depicted with flaming and flashing swords. They were stationed on the side of the garden, adjacent to where Adam was expelled, guarding the path leading to the Tree of Life, preventing any sneak or forceful entry. This implies several things to Adam. 1. That God is displeased with him. Despite harboring mercy for him, at that moment, God is angry with him, becoming his adversary and waging war against him. As the drawn sword suggests, to Adam, God is a consuming fire, for the sword is a flaming sword. 2. That angels are fighting against him. There is no peace with the heavenly hosts as long as Adam rebels against God. 3. That the way to the tree of life is closed, meaning the path where he was originally placed, the path of innocence without blemish. It is not said that the cherubim were placed to keep him, and his descendants away from the tree of life forever. Thanks be to God, there is a paradise prepared for us, with a tree of life in its midst, and we rejoice in that hope. Instead, the cherubim are stationed to guard the way to the tree of life where they are until now. This means that from that point onward, it is futile for him and his descendants to expect righteousness, life, and happiness through the power of the first covenant. For it is broken and irreparable, and its benefits cannot be sought or taken, because the covenant command is violated. Its curse applies in full, if judged according to that covenant, there is no opportunity left for repentance, and we all have no hope. God reveals this to Adam, not to make him despair, but to help and stimulate him to seek life and happiness in the promised shoot. Through this shoot, the flaming sword is set aside. God and his angels are reconciled with us, and a new and living way to the holy place is consecrated and opened for us. There is a divine counsel for the chaos at Babel. In this event, there seems to be a play on words both in sound and meaning with the terms Balal and Babel, signifying confusion. The Aramaic word Babel also means confusion.